Okay, in this video we're going to do a quick overview and take a look at the French model 1935S. Interesting little gun that was adopted before World War II and manufactured up until the 50s and it is chambered in the 7.65 by 20 millimeter or the 7.65 French long which has been kind of an obsolete caliber these little guns pop up every now and again. Uh, I can't remember. It probably was a while back when they were imported. Um, this one does not have an importer's mark, which means it was brought into the country before 1988. So you do find them here and there. Like I found this, a local dealer had one, uh, and I picked it up. And I got it more or less to work on making the ammo, but... Here recently, uh, Starline has made the correct brass for this round, uh, and you can get it with the head stamp and that on there. So it's an interesting little gun. And in this video, we'll look at it. I'll go over the history, and I'll disassemble and reassemble the gun, and you know, discuss it on uh, what I found online, a little information I have about it. So I'm going to just change the camera around so we can get a better look at it and. Enjoy the video. All right, the model 1935S. It's kind of an interesting story behind this gun. I'm really not an expert on French pistols, but the French adopted, had trials and adopted the uh, model 1935A, which is a different gun. And because the war, they knew war was coming uh, they couldn't get enough of them produced, so they went in the runner-up, which was the model 1935S, which this is. They also started producing it. Now, the strange thing is, the factory where this pistol was made, the workers hid the critical tooling, so when the Germans occupied in World War II, they could not produce the 1935S pistols. Okay, and it wasn't until 1946 and after the war that the French government started to uh, resume production at the end of the occupation. And there were two or three different manufacturers. I'm going to just give you the initials. MF, which built 10,000. SAGEM, which built about 10,000. And MAC, which you see is marked on this gun here. Uh, MAC produced about 56,000 pistols from 1946 to 1956. This gun was in production. And also, uh, after in 46, this must be a second variation because it mentions that MAC revived the safety to function as did the 35A safety. This change was included in all of the pistols starting in 1946, with the pistols being marked 1935SM1, which on the other side of the slide here, I'm hoping you can see it, you can see on the top there where it is marked with an M1. It's very light marking on there. So the pistol stayed in production until 56, and then eventually uh, it was the... Okay, the gun stayed in service until 1956, and this design directly inspired the MAC Model 1950 in 9mm Parabellum, which eventually replaced this S version and A version. So, it's kind of a... Another little simple pistol. Uh, it is calibered in a 7.65 by 20 millimeter French long, which is basically, I think, the same cartridge used in the World War I Springfield 30 caliber Penderson device, which they took some rifles, cut out a port, stuck a magazine with pistol bullets, and put a little adapter and tried to make them into a semi-automatic uh, rifle for close range or trench warfare. Well, I guess the French decided to use the cartridge and, and adopted it to put in these pistols. So 
That is one unusual thing about it. Okay, it's a basic, your basic semi-automatic gun. It is much similar. It's kind of like the Browning Model 1911 design. It has a link, a swinging link in there, and locks much similar to the big 45 auto. Okay. Also similar to the 1911 is this is your magazine release and you have an eight round magazine that comes out. Now while we're talking about the magazine, if you look at the magazine there's like a little nub on here uh, and that's why I think there is a difference with the magazines with the Model 35 S and A is what this nub does is this pistol has a magazine safety. If the magazine is not in the gun, the gun will not function. When you insert the mag, that little notch hits uh, an arm or lever inside the frame and then that the gun will fire now without the magazine. So this has a mag safety. This is a single action pistol. Older, most of the older designs were it's not double action. Now the safety itself is, is pretty unusual. In this position here like this, the safety is on. And what it does is it actually blocks the hammer from hitting the firing pin. When you rotate this up, you'll see that the block moves and now the hammer can get down and strike the firing pin. It's like kind of ground out of there. Okay, safety on, safety off. Okay, now, now your hammer can hit the firing pin exposed and also from the side of the gun it's visible, you know, tactile, you know, you can feel it and you can see it pretty damn good whether safety's on or off. Okay, safety off. Kind of unusual in its design. And the controls are as usual. Slide release, mag release, like I said, on this side. And then the only thing you have here is much like uh, the 1911 is this button here. And how you would take the gun apart. What I do is getting my finger on this, you pull the slide back, and if you look, there's a notch here. So you pull the slide back. Well, what I'll do is I'll get it to lock, make it easier for me. To do that, okay, drop the mag, and then pushing the uh, slide release lever from the other side. I think there's a detent in that in there, which is pretty worn, but this will come out pretty easy. You pull the slide back further, you get pressure off, and just push that out. Remove the slide release, and then the gun just comes right apart like this. And you can see, much like the 1911, it has the uh, swinging link. It doesn't have a bushing, it just has a guide rod and a spring that goes through a solid hole there. But the way the gun locks, fires and function. You can see it there now. Is the same. And then you just would get it out of its see it just has a simple thing that locks into the to the slide, not that dual lugs. And that's what your slide looks like, simple mechanism. 
The firing pin I haven't been able to get out. Something I don't know if you have to drift, push it down, drift out the safety and that. But there's a better look at the safety and how that thing works there. It's your barrel and your linkage. Even looks a lot the same other than uh, where this is, I believe that's a loaded chamber indicator goes in that notch. It's kind of similar to uh, some of your star, your Spanish star pistols. A little bit similar there. But it looks like, the frame looks like the same design, like a little miniature 1911. Okay, so then to get it back together, just put your barrel in. So it locks up, push the little link back, then you just, you got the button end, that goes to the front of the slide, and the flat end is what locks up against the barrel. Like that. Okay. And like I said, there is that link in there so just like on your 45 auto put it in there get your slide release lever and what you do is slide it over till you see where that link is and you got to get it through the link it's kind of Moving it very similar to the 45 automatic. And then slide her up till you get to the uh, notch in the slide. And then push it down in. And it should lock right in there. And there you go. Back together. So now we'll take a look at the markings up close. Like I said, on the left side, all you would have is the uh, manufacturer. On this side, you have the serial number, and the M1 is there, and that. And then this here, that little notch that was in the barrel. If you had a, mag, a cartridge in the chamber, that little uh, loaded chamber indicator would protrude and you could run your finger there and be sticking up and uh, you'd know you had one in a chamber. So that's about it. It's a simple gun. There are some unusual features to it, you know, like that safety's kind of strange and that. But pretty neat gun. And another uh, piece of military history here. And like I, sh I showed you, I'm developing uh, a load for this. Now that brass is available, so it'll be easy to shoot these old guns. It was pretty hard to get brass made up to shoot it. The cartridge has been obsolete for many years. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned.